you know we'll be starting the graduation ceremony for the School of Healthcare and Care Radicals in a couple of minutes time. Hello and welcome to the uh, graduation ceremony for the School and of, for Health and Care Radicals 2016. Uh, I'm Ollie Benson. I'll be um, hosting uh, the session this afternoon. Um, so uh, welcome everyone and um, we hope to have a, a good fun hour, um, a mixture of just recognising some of the people who've uh, graduated this year and also hearing some stories from uh, some of those individuals as well. Um, so, don't forget, this is an interactive uh, session today. Um, you can use the chat box to uh, contribute uh, throughout the, uh, th this afternoon, um, and we'll be monitoring those and reporting uh, back to them. And um, also, don't forget, if you're, a uh, you're on Twitter, you can use the handle SHCR, uh, or uh, tweet us at School for Radicals. And if you haven't already, then you can uh, request to join the uh, Facebook group, School for Healthcare Radicals, uh, and uh, you'll find lots of, uh, of the other graduates there already. 
So this afternoon, um, uh, there's a mixture of people here. Um, so as I said, I'm Ollie. I'm hosting uh, this afternoon. We've got Paul, uh, who will be our chat room monitor. So um, we'll be crossing to Paul um, to have a uh, to find out what's happening on the chat. Uh, we're also joined by the Chief Transformation Officer for Horizons, Helen um, Bethan, and she'll be giving some sort of final thoughts and comments at the end of the ceremony. Um, and we've also got Dom Kushnan, who is uh, on our uh, monitoring Twitter this afternoon. Uh, and not to mention behind the uh, scenes today, we've got uh, Joe, who's the event producer, and also joining us is Kate, who is the School for Health and Care of Radicals. Uh, coordinator. Um, so that's th uh, the plan today. So as I said, we will be um, just uh, going through the names of the people who have graduated t today and uh, mixing up uh, with some stories from some of those people taking part and you'll find out who those are as we go through the session. So without further ado, let's move on to uh, listing the starting the list of people who have graduated today. So uh, starting at, at the start of the alphabet, uh, we've got um, uh, Alana Shillacone, Alana Williams, Alice Lance, Alison Kindley, Amanda O'Donnell, Amy Stewart, Andrea Beecham, Andrew Barber, Angela Aitken, Angela Vaughan, Anne Guthrie, Anne-Marie Burns, Antoline Longburn and Barry Verdin. We have Bart Johnston, Becky Haynes, Becky Quinlan, Blanche Durota, Brenda Sinner Regan, Brenda Smith, Brenton Tay, Catriona Millen, Candice Marden, Carmen Hoffman, Carmen New, Carol Ann Court, Carol Ann, uh, sorry, Carol Rainsford, and Carolyn Chambers, Ka Carolyn Dunn, Kathy, uh, Carrie Toff, Catherine Murray, Charlotte Smith, Cheryl Johnson, Shikara Hendry, Christy Stevens, Claire Astbury, Claire Blackburn, Craig Moore, Cynthia King, Dana Levansky McMillan, Daniel K. Franklin, and Deb Thompson. We've got Debbie Bauman, Deborah Bancroft, Deborah Green, Deirdre Monroe, Diane Henneke, Diane Connor, Diane Murray, Dr. Alison Graham, Dr. Jihar Al, Dr. Gabrielle Peacock, Dr. Julie Hunt, Dr. Lorraine. Megahay, Elaine Bolton, and Elaine Shaw. So that's the first uh, of our, our group of uh, people who've graduated this year. Uh, and we're going to start with our uh, first story, uh, and that comes from Anthony Longburn. So Anthony um, should be on the line now. Anthony, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. So Anthony, you're going to tell your story about uh, being a uh, change radical, that's all right. Okay, no problem. Um, oh, excellent. We got the photo there in time as well. That's great. Um, okay, what I've used the um, black country flag for my picture for to talk through what my experience has been really, um, because since joining the school this year, I've found that the connections that I've been able to build through there has created um, an amazing work, and I've been able to move right, right outside of my comfort zone by looking at the people that I'm talking with and connecting with to make things happen, with talking to our directors of nursing within the trust that I work in and then engaging with people outside of our trust, looking at NHS England and people like yourselves with starting the um, Edge Club Twig chat that we've been running for a couple of months now. I seem to have gained a great deal of confidence with using social media and the power of social media to connect with people. So I was amazed at the um, response I had to the SH 
see our six C's tweet chats that we ran for a few weeks um, whilst the school was going on that we're setting up back onto um, a monthly tweet chat because that provided me and I think a lot of other people with a great opportunity to reflect around what changes we were making and also um, different things that were going on around our lives at that time. And that's about it, thank you. That's brilliant, Anthony. Um, I mean, I think, you know, kind of how you've used uh, the School for Health Radical, uh, and Care Radicals has been really interesting in sort of, uh, and the power of Twitter um, in, in particular. Um, I just wondered whether there was um, kind of, you know, where you see it going from, from now, really, and sort of, you know, what's next? Right. What's next? Um, well, I've used actually, um, because what I did this year with the school, I put it out to some of the care makers within our trust to see how they found it. Um, and they struggled a little bit, but that's just working around shift patterns and that kind of thing. I've been very lucky that I've been able to engage with a lot of the live sessions this year myself. So my plan next year, I'm actually developing the school as part of our trust strategy um, to develop the care makers for the future. Um, so during the school next year, um, I'm actually going to have a trust cohort of care makers that will be into post this year. Okay, um, uh, that's uh, good to know and hopefully uh, we'll see you again in the future and also obviously in the meantime we can find you on Twitter and you know it sounds like you're sort of really growing uh, a, a great community. Um, so we'll we'll look uh, out for that as well. So thanks yeah. very much, Anthony. Um, as a as a starter, a a, a great place uh, uh, to start. So uh, let's take it from. Um, so let's move on now to our next uh, list of uh, people who graduated this year. Um, so. We continue where we left off on the E's. So we've got uh, Elaine Smithers, uh, Lisa Stevenson, Elizabeth Lawton, Ellen Langton, Emma Curry, Eva Breelet, Gabrielle Bill, Ganesh Gajumun, Gary Slut, Gemma Franklin, Jaconda Del Sol, Jim Phillips, Gloria Esbona, Grace Lee. Hannah Jarrett, Heather Lowes, Henk Hadders, Hermes Santos, Jay Moes Tappin, Jackie Gillespie, Jackie Matson, Jacqueline Wilson, James Arkell, Jan Javers, Jane Douthwaite, Jane Hughes, Jane Roby, Jennifer Hodder, Jennifer Mann, Jennifer Pollock, Jenny Jones, Joe Millard, Joanna Kulitz, Joanne Spittery, John Sean Gallagher, Jonathan Home, Jonathan Lum, Jose Laville, Jose Louis Reloto Herreo, Jody Beswick, Julie Slimberg, Justine sorry, Justine Cushel, Kathleen McMillan. We have Karen Oaknan, Karen Pentel, Karen Charlton, Carrie White, uh, Karina Murray, Karen Girard, Kate Kittill, Kate Pinner, Kathleen Harrell, Kathleen Patterson, Kelly Guthridge, Kerry Trabalcini, Kirsty Atkinson, and Christine Campbell. That's the uh, second uh, lot of people who graduated this year. We're going to move on to our second speaker now, and this is uh, Tom Houston. So Tom should be on the line now. Tom, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. I can hear you, Ollie. Uh, I I feel for you reading out all those names. I know <laughs> how it was. Um, it was a bit of a hot potato, and uh, as people, so well, well done so far. I'm sure you've got a few wrong. Uh, well, I, I I've tried my best. 
So, um, uh, and hopefully, um, as people can see their names, that's the most important thing that they've uh, they've completed uh, the, the graduation. They've got their certificate, and this is just a little bit of icing on the cake. Um, so, Tom, um, you're, I was going to say you're up in Scotland, but obviously, wherever people are in the world, it, you may not you may well be down from Scotland. Um, so, do you want to um, tell us a bit about your story and how you got to be a, a change radical and how you used the School for Health and Care Radicals? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm, go I'm going to take you back in time, all that, on, and, and I was take you back it, it, 27 years ago, not to the wheelbarrow, although it, it might it might be that old, it might be older. Um, but uh, I, I was not only was I not in the boat, not only was I not on the edge of the boat, I think I was swimming in the sea as a freelancer. And uh, when I when I climbed on to the NHS Titanic thing, massive thing, I was very much on the edge, uh, working uh, on a project called Interact uh, that used the arts to work with young people on health and health promotion issues. And I, I've more or less stayed there um, a, for for a, a couple of decades, and my my journey has been more from the edge into the centre. Um, still staying in the realm of public health, and it, it really has only been the last a year or so that I've I got closer to the acute setting and the the vastness of that system, uh, and also into quality improvement or the the fashion and the trends around quality improvement uh, and um so so the picture which was hastily sent through was uh, if you can imagine uh, at a meeting a quality improvement meeting in your setting and you're coming up with a vision statement and the vision statement seems to me most of them are all about striving for excellence um and at those meetings, I the the rebel in me um, goes uh, along the lines of where's the dirt, and be because I think the reason that we're we're trying to improve things is because some things are in a bit of a mess, and although we talk about um, striving for excellence, uh, there can be a credibility gap between the paper work, the vision statement, and people's experience of whether it's a bit of uncertainty, whether it's things not working. So I think for me it's a, it's a dose of um, the, the, the practice in terms of realities of practice that um, it's important um, to bring to bear. And I, when I, when I first came across uh, the work, although there was very much a motivational side to it, it seemed to me there was a, a hope that we we peek into the um, the, re the realities of of practice um, and the realities of people's stories. So I've only been al allowed one slide. You're getting this rusty wheelbarrow from the north of Scotland, and the coal. It could it could be the the, the dismantling of the the manufacturing industries. Who knows what it is? People have invented the wheels, and they're not they're not working anymore. Um, perhaps if we uh, if, if we uncover the uh, the wheelbarrow, there'll be a group of radicals meeting and sharing their stories, and, and I think that that connection um, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of had a wee bit of a spark within me, so that that was what attracted me to the school. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's a great story, and I guess I'm going to ask you the same question as I asked um, uh, Tony. Um, sort of, where are you taking the school, uh, what you've learned from the school now? But the the, the 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 long answer could be I don't know, and and the the, the short answer is I think the, I think it helps. I think bits of it help ground in in the chaos. So whether I'm working. Um, with with colleagues linked into the national improvement programs, uh, and and we're we're talking about establishing a, a network. Sorry, I, I'm I'm seeing you slightly distracted there, but I won't be distracted by 
So I, I've encouraged the two or three of my key colleagues to, to look at module one in terms of starting with the cell. But I'm also doing some community based work and the, the, the people there are fantastic because they don't need encouragement to start small and to network and to keep things simple. So I, 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 I see things happening at two or three different levels, but I must be honest, I don't know whether I'll get the wheelbarrow back together or not. Well, I think, I, I think together uh, we can rebuild this wheelbarrow and it will be the best wheelbarrow that has ever been wheelbarrowed or whatever the, the term to, uh, to, uh, to, to wheel a barrow is, I guess wheelbarrowed. Um, Tom, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, really nice uh, to hear how sort of uh, the school, you've been motivated by, by the school and, and, and what uh, it's done and all the great work that you're doing in, in school. Oh, I've lost you, Ollie. Technical difficulties, bear with us one second, please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, yeah, Ollie, we can hear you loud and clear. It's Helen. Uh, brilliant. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, so, um, yeah, I was just saying, uh, Tom, great to hear uh, uh, what's happening in Scotland and all, all the great stuff you're doing there. And I know there's a big contingent of uh, people from uh, the school uh, who are operating in Scotland. So we're going to move on to the uh, next uh, sort of tranche of uh, people who graduated this year. So I'll run through those names and then we'll get a, another story uh, after that. So moving on, where we left off, we're on the L's. So we've got uh, Laurie J. Bell, Leanne Lockley, Lillian Whitman, Lillian Hung, Lily, uh, sorry, Linda McMaster, Lisa Long, Lisa Membro, Lorraine McLaughlin, Laurie Della Vaduva, Laurie Hayes, Lorraine Cliff, Louise Gilbertson, Louise McKinney, and Lindsay Corbs. We have uh, Lynette Raymer, Lynn Vanderbrink, Maria Balichado, Marion Page, Mary Allen McClear, Megan Tollefson, Meg Neelis, Melanie Needick, Michael Circuit Parr, Michelle Hummocky, Michelle Rook, Michelle Elliotts, Michelle Jenkins, and Michelle Lawson. We have Millie Carter, Molly Foulston, Monica Gullett, Nancy LeBreth, Nelia Carperell, Nicholas Trewinski, Norma Johnston, Opal Robert Robinson, Patricia Taylor, Paula Scullin, Peggy Briggs, Penny Finlay, and Peter Roberts, and Peter Toohey. Uh, we have Rachel Stenefick, Rachel Harper, Raymond Ashman Bruneef, Raymond McVie, Rebecca Vaughan, Renee Volcano, Richard Vallely, Roberta McLaughlin, Robert Hurst, Robin Stell, Rod Harmon, Rose Latrune, Roxana Franklin, and Sally Faraday. We're going to uh, move on now to our uh, third contributor. Uh, we've been to Scotland, we're now over to uh, Derry in Northern Ireland, and hopefully on the line we've got uh, Catriona Mullen. Can you hear us, Catriona? Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you, loud and clear. Can you hear me now? Yeah? Yes. Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for um, uh, uh, inviting me to speak today. I'm delighted to be participating. My name is Katrina Mullen and I work in the transformation team in the Western Health and Social Care Trust which runs down the western border of Northern Ireland. Um, so we're, 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 we're way out on the edge um, over here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I, I suppose the, the piece of work that I did um, 
as the test piece while I was participating with SCHR and then talk a little bit about um, the impact that SCHR has had on me and my ability to do my work. Um, before I was asked to do the piece of work, um, this was a piece of um, scoping work and it's now a major service development initiative around an integrated falls prevention model for the Western Trust area. Before I was asked to do this piece of work, before I knew I was going to be working on it, I attended a workshop last year um, where one of the stats really, really stuck with me about the impact of a fall or injuries from a fall on someone over 75 and that um, their survival rate after one year is about 40%. That really, really struck me in terms of the mortality that can um, commence after a fall. And I mean, all of us will hear people saying, oh, so-and-so had a wee fall, and we really don't. I, I certainly, even having had people in my family who had fallen and deteriorated, did not realize the scale of this. So um, that got me to thinking about all of the things that make us frail and um, all of the things that make us resilient. And the picture that I've sent is a piece of Aboriginal art. And for me, um, building a, an effective falls prevention model has been about the ground and the grassroots. And it's also be, it, it's also about marrying very you know as much advanced clinical care as we can with more traditional systems of how we look after each other and how we can promote resilience instead of frailty, given that there are such complex and multifactorial things. Um, when I was, as I started to do the work to pull together um, the various different people and perspectives who had been working on falls to look at you know, how we could join it all up, um, what I was really amazed by was that everyone understood the bigger picture. Um, commissioners, GPs, trusts, staff, um, community organisations that were involved in delivering strength and balance training, but everyone felt very constrained by the perceived lack of resources for joining it all up, um, but particularly also by service boundaries, so everyone could see what the problems were, and amazingly, every single person I spoke to when I was scoping the piece of work out um, had exactly the same take on what the problems were, um, but they all felt very isolated from each other. Um, so one of the things I realised was that there was no space, there was no space, and, and we needed to make space for communication across the boundaries. Um, and the result of that has been that everyone has agreed that we need, a, I suppose, a clinical model within a wider social model. So on the one hand, or on the one end of the spectrum, we have um, geriatricians starting to stratify outpatients clinics around falls um, uh, in terms of levels of need. And then on the very other end, we have GPs meeting with the community planning officers from the local council to talk about what kind of exercise programs should be in council leisure centres as part of the community planning process. One of the other things that I realised that uh, really joining things up was the only way to deal with how late or how early we were getting to people around falls, um, to access our falls OT service, you had to have fallen twice in the previous six months. And for me, if we turned around and said, well, you know, to, to access our cardiology service, you actually have had to have, you know, you've had to have two incidents um, of coronary arrest in the last six months. It, it doesn't make sense um, that there was this threshold there. So one of the mantras that we've developed has been prevent the first fall. So that work is motoring on. Commissioner has committed some money to it. We're in the process of more detailed design. But I suppose what the whole experience of doing this piece of work while I was with SEHR has been is that um, I suppose uh, my work before I came into the health service, which is only, I came into the health service about six years ago, um, I worked in cross-border cooperation and in regional development. So my work has been always about, um, I suppose, uh, facilitating change across boundaries and, and enabling people to work across boundaries. And the thing for me with SCHR that was so powerful was to see the slide that Helen gave us about old power and new power and how they interact. And I just thought, finally, that on one slide is my perception of this, but I hadn't been able to find words for it. So I had this almost this sort of, you know, eureka moment where I suddenly realized, you know, all of this is real and, and it isn't just about the old power. It isn't just about trying to make everything fit into hierarchy. There is this new and more fluid which is about that dispersed leadership and, and if we can 
create a sense of that, then that's how we will actually do the transformation. That's how we will shift the system left in terms of creating more complex community care systems. So that's sort of, I think for me, SCHR helped me to replace a kind of dissonance that was in myself about how I perceived the world around me and the system that I was working in. That suddenly changed into being able to understand it and give it words. Um, so uh, as part of the work that I had done, I, I, I took things like the five domains of energy for change and I actually mapped all of the, the sort of what I would call the human assets and all of the skills and, and intellectual capital that we had in our system around fault. And again, once you actually started to put it down, um, it actually helped us to acknowledge what we've already got, what resources are already there. Um, I think generally speaking, and it's, it's, I don't know if it's true um, throughout the entire NHS, but because of the fact that we have to respond to um, risk, we tend to focus on maybe the 5% of things that are wrong or that have gone wrong or that need to be done differently next time. And I think sometimes the risk of that is that we don't acknowledge all of those positive assets that are, that are in the system. We don't acknowledge that it's okay to be a rebel. Um, but so for me, um, SCHR helped me to see what was important about helping people to see things and it and, and enabled me to see um, the positives instead of railing against the negatives. Um, so my, the magic switch in my head um, was SCHR um, and an awful lot of the concepts that, that you covered in, in those modules. Um, and I, I suppose the key thing that I have left with is that if you're trying to do change, it really you really do have to focus on people's motivations. And if you get that right, the rest will look after itself. So I would just to say, like to say, thank you very much for allowing me to share my perspective, and thank you very much for the opportunity, SCHR. It sounds like you're doing some amazing work, um, um, and you know, actually, as, as you said, sort of, you know, pools are one of those things that people sort of talk about that, that um, sort of don't recognise the impact, and it's really good to see actually um, how their sort of. The, what you've learned in the school is is really being applied. I guess I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you the same question I've asked Tony and Tom. Mm -hmm. um, where next? What's what's happening next? You know, where are you taking what you've learned? Where next in terms of the piece of work, or where next generally? <laughs> uh, piece of work, or, or you know? Yeah, no, I think I think I mean I, really I, the future. I think where, where where things are at the moment is that I'm 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 enjoying um, just. Uh, Working with people who are suddenly just discovering that sense of of, of uh, energy uh, because we've agreed to do something as a network. So um, we're hoping to have in place within about six months a single point of referral. Um, there are a whole lot of things that have just kicked into action as a result of the piece of work. Um, a lot of parallel developments happening, um, outpatient reform happening, um, this work in terms of community planning around frail elderly happening. Um, I, there's, a, there's a really big local dialogue around frailty and resilience happening with volunteer organisations on the ground here. Um, so I suppose um, where next is, 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 is moving as a connected organic thing as opposed to continuing to do stuff in our silos and um, that can take us anywhere we want. Brilliant. Some really interesting uh, sort of comments and, and thoughts there. So. Uh, thanks very much, Catriona, for, for your contribution. You're welcome. And, Thank you. Uh, and glad that the uh, school uh, could sort of make some, you know, um, sort of such a big impact. And um, and actually, you know, I think your story demonstrates just what you know, sort of one person going uh, on, on this school actually you know, sort of what it leads to. So we're going to do the uh, uh, the last um, sort of tranche of people who are graduating. So we'll show you those names and go through them. We've got one more story. Um, we'll grab a little bit of uh, feedback from uh, what sort of people are saying in the chat room. Don't forget, if you haven't um, put your comments there, um, you're more than welcome if you want to respond to any of the stories uh, you've heard. It, it's good. There's a, a good few little uh, conversations happening there. Um, and then, obviously, finally, we'll, we'll hear from Helen, who will sort of, I guess, reflect on, on this year's school and perhaps offer you know, some some final thoughts for us uh, to leave today. So without further ado, let's move on to the uh, next um, group of, of people. Um, so we're starting at uh, S, and we've got uh, Sally Pesaro, uh, Sandra Thompson, Sarah Aris Blanco, Sarah Squitzio, 
Shanith Bauji, Shannon Earthwell, Sharon Knight, Jim Shoner, Sonny Cox, Stacey Puffroman, Stacey Hansel, Stella Peck, Stephanie Murphy, and Stephen Maxwell. We have Susan Rosen, Susan Thuraji, Sweeper Krishna Neck, Sylvia Johnson Lay, Ted Reese, Tamina Khan, Terence John Watkins, Terence Chung, Tina Hamilton, Tina Vestrana, Tom Houston, Tracy Thompson Frayson, Trevor Liddle, and Trina Ryan, Vanessa Gardner, Victoria Lee, Victoria Schmidt, Virginia Venditti, Walid Noor, Wayne Lamb, Zila Reistad, Yvonne Swag, and Tahara Shamani. Uh, so that was the completion of the list of graduates uh, this year. Uh, we're going to now move on to our, our final uh, sort of guest speaker uh, who graduated this year, and that's uh, Jane Douthwaite. Um, Jane is in the northeast of England. Jane, can you hear us? I can, yes. Can you, he can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear, Jane. So, Jane, do you want to tell Wonderful. us a, a bit about your story and how sort of you used the, uh, the school um, and what you got out of it this year? Yes, certainly, yeah. So, hello everyone. My name is Jane and I'm a student midwife um, and I'm based in the North East. So, it's brilliant to be able to be here today to speak to you all and share a little bit about my experiences and what I've managed to take from the school. So, I'm sure we can all agree that rocking the boat and trying to stay in it is really difficult. So, if you try and imagine doing this from the point of view of being a student, someone right down at the bottom of that ladder and I can certainly tell you firsthand that it's really really difficult and such a challenge so even simple things such as getting people to stop even for 30 seconds let's say to listen to what you have to say trying to get those meetings and to have access to those at a management level is so difficult I seem to have been floating around in a world where predominantly everyone's in that old power mindset. So much hierarchy out there, loads of politics, and as a student, I just perhaps haven't fit in. So my last six months have been a daily example of being at the edge. I've had a, a number of personal projects on the go. Predominantly, these have been around person-centered care and trying to bring some sort of human factor back to our teams within the NHS. So looking at how we can empower our colleagues, focusing on staff wellbeing, and then trying to develop a tool for use in our settings, which would allow um, transparency of change to be available to all. So I think these projects have been seen as things that have perhaps shouldn't be of my concern, things that have been too big for a student to be taken on. So one day I might be there wondering, have I said too much? Have I expressed too many thoughts on that and perhaps rocked the boat a bit too much, a bit too hard and ended up falling out and swimming? And that's often what has been happening and it's been, from that point of view, a massive learning curve. People just don't seem to like the suggestion of change. Anyone who challenges the status quo seems to be outcast at times, and it, it has been really difficult. I've often heard phrases such as, but we've always done it that way, Jane, and perhaps that's a dangerous mindset to have. The easiest thing for me to do would have been to simply comply, to do as I've been told, so to go to university, to go to work and go home. But that just didn't sit easy with me. And what I found is that despite that resistance that's been out there, being at the edge is such a great place to be. So I know last week on Twitter, Helen had shared a fantastic article um, by a gentleman called David Brooks, 
So if you haven't read it yet, I would certainly recommend it. And it was about being at the edge of the inside. And this really resonated with me. David had talked about three positions in our organisations. Those who are insiders. So those in the rooms where all these decisions are made. The outsiders. Those behind the walls. And then a third position. Those at the edge of the inside. So perhaps you could say that's you and me. We exist there in these organisations, but we're not consumed by it. We work right out at the boundaries. We're there building bridges. We're opening doorways. And these are really crucial roles for us all to play. And being free from those at the core, at the management level, we're there to hear everyone's point of view. So what I found is that I've been able to see Colleagues in a feelings, find out what's been really good on a unit, what people love, what they're passionate about, but at the same time, what isn't working. So far from being someone that's passive, we can clearly see the reality and understand the wholeness of all these situations that are out there clinically through witnessing and providing support to one another. But I suppose at the same time, there's some that have seen me as a threat to them, which has been a bit, a bit of a joke to me. And the, the young student, and I'm seen as a threat. It's, it's been so funny to witness. I've been called someone too big for the boots, a tall toppy that perhaps needs topping down. So there's certainly downsides of being and working at the edge. It can definitely be a lonely place to be. But to find our flock, and that when we build these weak ties, which I found really essential and empowering, we can see how we can move forward. And we certainly can't be rebels alone. So I love Twitter from this point of view. It's something before the school. I've never um, had any experience with it at all. But it's been absolutely wonderful. Building these weak ties has allowed me to gain success with some of these projects that I've tried to initiate. And with this, meeting fabulous individuals. So people such as Helen Sanderson Associates, there's a, a wonderful lady called Emily, who I've been working alongside. And her belief in myself to push projects forward has been absolutely immense. So together we've walked in new directions and this has really helped with a sense of unity and given me that courage to lead, to stay true to myself and my beliefs. And these ties that we build help us to not just conform. They allow us to really appreciate that true power of the few, the power of the minority out there. And for me, the confidence that we can gain from meeting people to challenge the status quo and to rock the boat is massive. So for those who are listening today, and perhaps listening at a later date, who have worked along students such as myself on a daily basis, who facilitate our learning and provide mentorship, thank you. By genuinely welcoming us with these open discussions and extending your invitations to include us in meetings, you can really make us part of the team. And we may just surprise you one day with a new perspective you hadn't considered or a new point of view. So just quickly to end here, it would be really fabulous if after this graduation, you would also share some of your passions with us all. Share your common goals and let's tag the school in it and see if we can have a final push together to connect with even more people. This isn't the end of the graduation. We must really keep moving forward. And I don't just mean following someone on Twitter. We need to exchange email addresses and share your telephone numbers and let's actually start conversations together. So we'll make a plan together now. For me, I'm going to be answering Ollie's question here before he's even asked it. So for me, 
going forward, what I'm going to be starting to do is I'd love to be a part of the change there. This wonderful, massive, randomised co um, coffee trial that Helen's organising. And then helping to facilitate in the school change workshops that we have planned across the country. So I'll leave you all with a final question here of what have you got planned? Wow, that was uh, uh, really inspirational and some uh, great plugs for some of the work that, um, uh, that that's going on, um, which I hope lots of uh, people will take part in, including Change Day uh, on the uh, on October the nineteenth, and um, some of the events that um, uh, surrounding that, including the randomised coffee trials and the Change Day training, which, um, as you mentioned, Jane. Uh, you're hopefully going to be involved in and um, there's lots of opportunity for other people who uh, either want to uh, come along and help or um, or actually just help promote it I think is um, uh, is really important the the, uh, the the regional training days that you mentioned will be an opportunity for uh, sort of if you've got colleagues or, or, or people who want to experience what you experience go through uh, the school to sort of uh, get something similar through a, a one-day workshop. Um, and you very cleverly managed to uh, answer my question uh, before I, uh, I answered it. So, Jane, I'm just going to ask, I mean, you're obviously mm -hmm. um, a student. Uh, I am. Uh, how do you think, like, I mean, uh, the school um, could be, you know, like, sort of for students across the country how you know how could it sort of have an impact a, a, across um sort of uh, if if lots of students uh, took part in the school what do you think the impact would be there i've actually contacted my university this afternoon and said you should really watch this video um at the end of the day because i think it's so essential moving forward that we instill these values and behaviors and ideas in students right at the start of the career. Why should change and leadership and putting new things forward be something that you have to consider when you're an experienced practitioner or a manager? Why can't it start right at the very beginning? Because certainly, even those who are students, we have lots to offer that's out there. We have lots of new points of view and because we're not consumed by that rhetoric and we perhaps are very idealistic and naive in our ideas, it doesn't mean that we don't have a lot to offer. Uh, yeah, great. I mean, I think, uh, you know, if you're managing to, uh, uh, to get students at your, at your university uh, involved and, you know, actually sort of... Uh, you know, pushing it, that that would be really powerful. And, you know, if we could, mm -hmm. as you say, if we could uh, get sort of every s sort of student, whether they're, you know, medical or nursing or, uh, associate, you know, allied health professionals or, or whatever their, their sort of uh, involvement is, if they could, you know, do the school, I think there you know, could be a massive impact on sort of how health healthcare is delivered across the, the country. So, exactly, Jane, thank you yes. for your, um, you know, really well, uh, you know, out um, story, I think you know lots of people will have appreciated just sort of you know your experience of of being a student and um, and actually still having the you know ability to use what you learnt through the school to sort of uh, instigate instigate change um, where you are. So um, uh, yeah, as I said, thanks very much, Jane. Um, okay. We're going to just um, sort of just. Uh, before we we hand over to Helen, mention um, some of the teams who gained uh, certification. So, as you know, you can do this uh, school individually, but we know people like to join um, a, as groups. Um, so, these are just some of the the teams: uh, the ACR team, the GEM team. Yeah, there's a team in Melbourne, Australia. There's a team from Saint Elizabeth, and there's a team from Vancouver Health Authority. And I think those sort of uh, just those those names demonstrate the international impact that uh, the school has. It's not just people within the UK, uh, but it's uh, people across the world. Um, so it's just, uh, I guess, for me to say congratulations to the class uh, of 2016. Um, I hope uh, you've enjoyed um, 
at your time in the school. Um, and I guess we're now going to hand over uh, to Helen, who is going to um, talk a little bit more um, about um, sort of you know where next um, and sort of some I guess some final thoughts. Helen, can you hear us? Box and looking after the um, Twitter and see what we've um, been hearing. Uh, so we've um, I, I'll just uh, read some out because uh, we've just had a bit of a, a, a technical thing here. Um, so um, just some discussions on the um, I guess on the stories was was the main interest on the um, uh, on the chat box. Um, so Carolyn Chambers. Said um, I was talking about Jane's story. Um, sounds like you're challenging the status quo and the need for personal resilience. Can't be us, uh, underestimated. Um, and um, Jane, as we just heard, was responded to Catriona's story, saying intrinsic and uh, extrinsic motivation is essential. And uh, thanks for sharing. And um, Kate, um, Kate Pound, um, said she could really connect to Jane's story uh, of change. So that's just, I guess, some of the, some of the comments that, that we've been getting through. Great. Okay. So, um, can you hear me loud and clear? We can indeed. And can you see me? Uh, we can see you. Yeah, fantastic. So, the first thing to say is, you know, um, real congratulations to everybody who has um, graduated this afternoon. Or, or, or this morning. Um, I want to give a special shout out. Is I don't know if it says transform or CEZ um, Z transform who've told us on Twitter that they're having an English tea party in Canada. Um, and um, sounds like a sounds like a great idea. But we've got people joining us today and people who will watch this the recording from uh, from all over the world. And I think it was great, you know, hearing the stories from Tony, from Tom from Catriona and from Jane. And I think, you know, we get a real sense of the, the power of the school. And, and it's interesting because when you listen to those four stories, you know, it's not so much about, about teaching people to do things. It's actually about a mindset and a perspective and, you know, making sense that, you know, because I'm here in my organization trying to make change happen and, you know, it's very, very difficult, all of a sudden, you know, it makes sense to me and I can meet up with other people from all over the world, you know, who, um, who, who think this, the same and it's, I think it's a very... Helen, we've just lost your audio, so I don't know what's happened. Uh, if you've, uh, if something's happened. Helen, can you hear us? Uh, we're just trying to uh, reconnect Helen. I don't know um, if uh, we'll, we'll try and bring you uh, sort of Helen's thoughts as soon as she can hopefully reconnect to us. So Helen's just trying to uh, reconnect um, her headphones. It seems to have the same issue as me. It must be a, a headphone bug. <laughs> we can hear something. Hey. We can hear you now. Can you hear okay. Us? Yeah, I can hear you. Brilliant. Okay. That's very frustrating when that happens. Right. Can Can you hear me now? I, I can yeah. Hear you. Okay. Um, so I don't know how much you heard there because I was talking away to myself and nobody uh, nobody could. Um, hear me, but um, I'll, I'll just carry on anyway from where I left off. So, you know, a number of our um, our speakers talked about old power and um, and new power, and you know what we have to recognise is that the you know our world is absolutely changing, and many of the old rules and the old ways 
don't work in the future, they don't work as well. And you know, many of the organizations that we're part of haven't kind of caught up with this yet. But you know, just listening to our four speakers, you know, we get a real sense of, um, of where the world's going and, that the, and how the kind of learning that we do as part of the School for Health and Care Radicals is more important than others, than ever. And you know, what, what eventually, um, organizational leaders will, will realize, and actually the smartest ones do already, is how powerful um, and how important people like us are in the world of change. And one way of thinking about it, you know, who are the people who make change happen in our health and care system? And I've got two lists here. I've got list A and I've got list B. And list A, and I'll put these titles on people, but actually they, they might be slightly different in your organization. But, you know, is it the transformation program board or the, or the, the project port board or the people in charge of the change? Is it the senior leader who's the program sponsor for your change? Is it the program management office that program manages all the projects? Is it the leaders of the 17 work streams for urgent and emergency care or whatever the equivalent is? Is it the project manager, the team leader, the unit manager, the person who's the formal change facilitator in the organization? Or is it list B? You know, who's on list B? The Mavericks and the Rebels, Rebels, the positive deviants who actually choose to do things differently and succeed. And I think we heard a few um, positive deviants um, amongst our speakers this afternoon. The contrarians, because they can think differently. You know, the non-conformists who can see things through a lens that no one else can see. The people who are hyper-connected because whether they're, they're good for the organization or they're bad for the organization, they spread behaviors, they role model at a very big scale, they can set mountains on fire and they can scale up anything they get their hands on. Um, and is it the hyper-trusted? You know, the people who, um, there are many, many reasons why they're trusted and it doesn't matter. And you know, what, what we've got to say is, you know, thinking about where many of our health and care organizations are at the moment and what needs to happen. You know, actually, people in this day, the people who perform and live in, in the land of formal organizations are very different from the people who can make or bake power for change. And you know, many of us on this call actually were list B people. And um, increasingly what's happening in the world is the list A people realize that actually the list B people are some of the most um, powerful people for change. And you know, we've talked a lot in the School for Health and Care Radicals about being disruptive. And uh, this made me laugh when I saw Alison Cameron sent me this picture. And, uh, and it says politely disruptive. But you know, sometimes we think that being disruptive is somebody who, you know, rushes in like a exocet missile, creating havoc around the organisation. But you know, disruption not isn't and the kind of disruption that we do isn't like that. You know, the kind of disruption that we do is all about connections and relationships. Um, and it isn't about alienating people. So, you know, we are the people who are positively or politely um, disruptive. This was some research that I've been reading um, recently that's so interesting. This was a research report that Google published a few weeks ago, and it was called Project Aristotle. And what Google did was it did really intensive analysis, some of the, the most in-depth analysis that we've ever seen in the world of um, teams and team performance. And you know what they found was, um, Actually, when you think about you know who who performs really well, which kind of teams perform really well, you know, um, who are the, the the people in the teams that that really deliver? Okay, it it was really very little to do with having people that were the most talented people in the team. It was about teams connecting with each other, having a shared purpose, and actually what they found was that the key to good teamwork is being nice. You know, it's about being a decent human being. It's about being authentic. It's about being trusted, not letting other people down. Um, and, you know, those are the values that we espouse as, um, as health and care radicals. So just a couple of quotes to end with, really. Um, I've, I've really loved this, this quote from Cheryl Strayed. And she said, you know, when you're speaking, in the truest, most intimate voice about your life, 
you're speaking with with a universal voice. And you know, we heard it this afternoon. We heard it from Tony and Tom and Catriona and Jane. You know, when you operate in the world in a way that is truly who you are, okay, that's the way that you connect with the most people. Because you know, people, other people understand that. Other people connect with your values. You know, ev other people um, connect with your purpose. So I think you know, as we move on from the School for Health and Care Radicals, what are the ways that each of us can can stay talking with that truest, most intimate, you know, uh, most real voice? So finally, I'd like us to take some advice from Ted Coyne, and he says. Uh, connect enthusiastically, give relentlessly, be that nice person, and lead. And if we do these three things, the future is ours. And you know, when we look ahead to all the challenges that we face in the health and care system or whatever sector you're in, you know, so many things, um, so many challenges face us. I think if we can be the people who connect enthusiastically, give relentlessly, and lead in a in a really you know connected way um, based on authenticity. Then the future um, truly is ours. So um, thanks to all of you for taking part this afternoon. Thanks for being part of the um, School for Health and Care Radicals. Um, thanks for giving so many people hope and uh, potential and, um, and and possibility. And you know I really hope that we can stay in touch. I hope that you you're part of the Facebook group. I hope we can see, keep connecting on social media because you know we really can change the world together. Thank you. Thank you Helen for that I, I think uh, really valuable um, uh, sort of final thoughts and some uh, really nice nice things about being nice. Um, so I think that's about it for our graduation. It's come to uh, 3.30 which is when we, uh, we said we'd end so um, we've timed that well. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody uh, who took part, um, particularly Tony, Tom, Catriona and Jane, uh, and also obviously the, the team here, uh, including Joe and Paul and Kate um, and Dom as well. And uh, thanks obviously to Helen for those uh, final uh, thoughts. Uh, as we mentioned before, um, Change Day is coming up on October the 19th and um, we've got some regional roadshow uh, uh, sort of events that will be taking place across the country and um, that would be uh, really grateful if um, if you'd like to uh, get your colleagues uh, to take part in because um, you know the way to, to build this movement is to get as many people uh, involved as possible so we'll, we'll send that out and then look out on, on Twitter and on Facebook for details of that and um, look out for uh, the next term of school um, and encourage uh, your colleagues and friends and people you think would benefit um, from this from uh, taking part. That's about it from us for now. Um, I'd like to thank everybody here and um, have a great uh, rest of the day and a great summer. Thanks very much. Bye.